Hey, how's everybody doing today? So I got this uh, information here I wanted to put up. Uh, this is some further evidence of uh, what's what's transpired, the uh, communications and so forth. Hopefully I can get this camera to focus so you can read the uh, uh, the, the letters, the, the writing, because uh, uh, some of it uh, doesn't seem to want to focus or cooperate, so kind of having uh, some technical difficulties still. But... Um, before I get into the exhibits, what I wanted to uh, also address is I'm going to be uh, posting a recording after this of some of the noise from last night uh, that I got to experience, and uh, I want you to consider something. I know some of you have a really difficult time, you know, thinking outside the box or, you know, being open-minded or... Uh, that sort of thing. I mean, based on some of these comments, it's like people just look for the first little sliver of information to support their unhinged narrative so they can start attacking people, but they don't bother to continue reading. They don't, they don't get the full story. Uh, like this one idiot, uh, talking about the definition of the word person in Black's Law, um, and trying to argue with me about it. Well, the, the moron didn't bother looking up the other definitions that I had mentioned, not just Black's Law Dictionary, but also the definitions of the word person according to the codes, both the state and the federal codes, and compare those. Well, this idiot didn't bother doing that. He just found the first bit of information that supported what he thought was right and true and to him, and he started to attack me for it because he thought I was wrong. But the idiot didn't bother gathering all of the information. He only had a small portion of it, so I had to put him in his place and you know, tell him what an idiot he is, because, you know, just sometimes you got to do that. Um, you know, I would like to be more compassionate with these people and, um, dare I say, understanding, but at, at this point in time, I just, I can't. Um, I, I can't continue to baby these people and coddle them, and, I mean, not that I really have ever before, but... You know, clearly these people have been coddled their whole entire life. And now, now that they're getting information that contradicts what they've been taught and believed their whole life, it's, it's a, it's a shock to their system. And so it's not so much that they, it, that it's not true or that, um, what I'm saying is not factual. What the problem is, is that these people, it's kind of like uh, Stockholm syndrome. See, when they're given information that, uh, destroys and shatters, the misconceptions that they've carried their entire life. They don't want to accept the fact that they've been lied to their entire life and accept the responsibility of that. So they attack people like me who are exposing the truth and exposing, uh, you know, my experience uh, for what it's worth and showing the extreme and egregious malfeasance of these public servants. But these people that... Uh, that really have a difficult time with this. It has nothing to do with the facts. It has nothing to do with um, what reality is per se. What it has everything to do with is the fact that these people are mentally unstable and they don't have the ability. They're not mature enough to realize that they've been lied to and to learn the truth. And so what they do is, is they attack people like me. Uh, it's a sign of immaturity. It's a sign of uh, being a slave, a slave mentality you know, protecting their slave masters, um, you know, however you want to look at it, that's, that's exactly what it is. So, uh, before I go any further, I wanted to also address, um, I don't think I mentioned, I'm going to be posting a recording of some noise from last night from, uh, one of the local area businesses here, uh, relatively close to my, the property I'm at. And, uh, I, I want you to keep in mind whether it's the recording I'm going to be putting up after this, uh, posting or the ones that I've already, uh, recorded and posted on here. A lot of you can't seem to understand that uh, when I'm recording with a microphone, uh, sources of noise that are closer to the microphone are going to be louder uh, than sources that are farther away. So a lot of people can't seem to grasp the concept, it's very simple, that there's crickets and bullfrogs and birds and all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, nature, um, right next to my house, there's a pond and, uh, this pond is, is full of wildlife crickets and 
birds and bullfrogs and toads and all kinds of stuff. So uh, they occasionally make some noise. So when I'm recording the noise from these local area businesses, people can't fathom that, okay, the crickets are right next to my house. So, and, and really, really close to the microphone. So they're going to be louder relatively in the microphone in the recording uh, than the noise that's having to travel, say, a third or a half a mile away, um, or from a third or a half a mile away, uh, rather than being practically right next to the microphone. Um, it's, it's just simple. It's a simple concept. So when you're listening to the recording, Try to uh, keep an open mind and realize that, uh, first of all, the crickets are not as loud as they appear to be in or seem to be in the uh, recordings. Um, it's just it's the type of microphone. It's the uh, proximity of the, the sources of the noise uh, related to the position of the microphone. So just just realize that. But if you listen through the crickets, if you're if you're able to do that, if you can. You know, keep an open mind. If you can pull your head out of your backside long enough to pay attention, if you uh, you know listen through the crickets, you'll hear all the machinery in the background. That's not supposed to be there. All I'm supposed to be hearing is crickets and birds and wildlife and you know nature. Um, that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is when unnatural sounds, excuse me, are allowed to persist and uh, destroy the. Uh, peace and sanctity of the community, of the environment, of the neighborhood, of this property. Uh, preventing me from being able to get any rest, relaxation, uh, you know, constantly having to hear this noise, it's a disturbance. It's what's known as a disturbance of the peace, for those of you that don't know. Um, this is what I've attempted to get these incompetent public servants to address, but you know, they clearly have a different idea of what their job is, which is contrary to what the law states. Or, excuse me, what the laws state. So, let me get into this a little bit. I got some exhibits here that I uh, had submitted uh, to the court. And this was regarding a civil suit that I had filed, uh, attempting to get remedy uh, from all this malfeasance and the uh, destruction of the property. Uh... So, let me open this up here. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Let's see. Hopefully you all can read that. Full screen it. See if we can make it a little bigger. So hopefully you guys can read that. So, uh, first of all, I've got uh, a couple files there of transcripts. Um, if you go back, uh, let's see. I want to say it was around July or August of 2020. Uh, that's what this particular case, uh, CRB 2000832, um, this particular case was in the Zanesville Municipal Court, uh, and this was the, this is the transcripts and the, uh, I believe the video recording with the audio of the, uh, the, the hearing and, uh, part of the trial where the uh, detective Tom Porter had perjured himself on the stand, admitted that he failed at completing a proper investigation during my cross-examination. So I submitted that information here. Um, you can see there, uh, P1, there's uh, an email from Donald Mason. Um, P2, email from Doug Mary. Uh, you can see the, the dates there respectively. Uh, lots of emails. There's a couple of screenshots of conversations. Um, I've included a couple uh, screenshots from a spectrum analyzer to show the low frequency noise. Uh, I also have uh, copies of the noise assessment that the uh, American Electric Power did at the at this property that uh, uncovered the low frequency noise. I'll show you the levels there. Um, let's see, I've got a couple files here of uh, the Stave Company's noise, Casting Solutions noise, and then uh, I had included in this because this is what ultimately started all of this and uh, created this, whatever the hell this is. Um, the last few files there, uh, I have a call now to uh, AEP about them fixing uh, this issue. 
but they uh, refuse. They want to play games, and you can see there in the last uh, last posting uh, what AEP did when I called to report this uh, uh, disturbance, this uh, uh, damage to my property that they're causing. What they did was is they rerouted my call so that way I couldn't get a hold of an AEP representative and file a complaint about it. What they did was they rerouted my call to, if I remember correctly, it was West Virginia or Virginia. It was a sister company or a um, uh, I can't remember what you call it, but uh, it, it's a, a part of their uh, larger corporation. It's a, a subsidiary, I think. I'm not sure the exact terminology of theirs that uh, it's in a different state. So what they did was is they, they routed my call to this other state so that way I couldn't get a hold of anybody from AEP here in Ohio, specifically in the service area where the property is uh, that the damage is being caused and has been since uh, July of 2018. So I included all of this. Uh, I outlined all of this information in the affidavits and in the filings, the pleadings that I had filed in the case. Uh, but all of it was ignored, every single bit of it. Not a single bit of the evidence was rebutted or uh, controverted. Uh, neither any of the affidavits uh, were rebutted or controverted whatsoever. Um, so these people have defaulted twice. And I'll, I'll show you at some point, I'll... Uh, show you the, show you the actual contracts uh, that they are in breach of. Aside from the actual trust, um, the the breach of trust that they constituted by refusing to do their jobs accordingly. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up uh, the email from Don Mason. Again, hopefully you'll be able to read this. Focus. Okay. And you see here, February 21st, uh, if I remember correctly, let's see, I don't know what this is. Whatever. Okay. Uh, Sorry about that. So uh, you can see here, February 21st, uh, if I remember correctly, let me go back. Let's see, so this is from 2020, February 21st, 2020. Uh, this is right here from Donald Mason. Uh, I have a new safety director who starts on Monday. I am going to have your issue as a priority for him. So that was right after uh, Donald Mason took office as uh, the quote unquote mayor of Zanesville. Um, and this is after uh, discussing it with him at length before him taking office. Uh, before he officially um, uh, announced his campaign and running for mayor, if I remember, remember correctly, or it might have been right about the uh, that time on the cusp of him uh, announcing his uh, his run for that particular seat, and uh, and he assured me, and this is further evidence of it, that uh, it, it was the city's responsibility. It is the city's responsibility. The municipal corporation's responsibility to address the disturbance. Um, so here, and I may also get into some of the other emails that I have uh, saved in my email account from uh, other conversations that I had with this uh, particular individual. So you can see there, February 21st, uh, he's got a new safety director. He's referring to Doug Mary, uh, and he says, I'm going to have your issue as a priority for him. So this is conveying to me when I read this that uh, he's getting a new safety director and he is going to make the safety director uh, 
he's going to make it a priority for the safety director to address the noise issues, the disturbance issues. So here I thought, you know, we're getting somewhere. We're making progress. You know, keep in mind, this is uh, roughly two years, I believe, just shy of two years after this started. So it started up in July 2018. Here we are, February 21st of 2020. Uh, next, we have an email from Doug Mary, 12 May 2020. Uh, this is just, uh, let's see, just about two months, maybe about a month and a half after that email from Don Mason, claiming that uh, he's going to make the issue a priority. So here's what Doug Mary has to say. Doug Mary says, on May 12th, 2020, you need to take your noise problem somewhere else. You can't seem to get it through your head. Uh, the noise is in the county. We cannot do anything about it. The crickets in your video are louder than the barely audible noise you claimed keep you awake. You don't like our suggestions, so you are out of options in the city. I gladly help anyone who actually wants help and are capable of understanding what they are told. You don't seem to get the difference between city and county or jurisdiction. You sure don't understand the law. Stop harassing the dispatchers. I can't help you any more than you have been told. I got off work at 1630 hours and I have other things to take care of. I will be back in the office at 0830 hours if you still need an explanation of what the difference between a problem with a factory in the county uh, in the county and the fact when only handle problems originating in the city. Have a good night. See, this, this jerk-off, Doug Mary, this is, this is who Donald Mason appointed as the public safety director. This guy doesn't even know the law himself. How is he directing the public safety department when he doesn't realize that it is the municipal corporation's responsibility to address noise even when it's in the county? But yet here, he's claiming that I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, Doug Mary, on the contrary, you're a fucking idiot. Because you are required by law to follow it. You're bound by those laws. Here you're making excuses for your malfeasance and incompetence. And the malfeasance and incompetence of your uh, quote-unquote officers, your employees, your quota hired dispatchers that you claim that are being, are being harassed. When you just, you're just making stuff up. You're just making stuff up like a bully. You're supering your authority, acting out of bounds. Uh, probably because there's no accountability. There's no internal affairs department. There's no agencies that are going to investigate you or any of your cohorts for your malfeasance and your crimes. So this is what you do. You bully people. Right out the gate. Right out the gate. It's one of the first uh, communications I have with this joker. Um... So you can see there, and real quick too, as I stated previously, he mentions the crickets. Well, this idiot is too stupid to realize that the crickets are right next to the house, right next to the microphone. So of course they're going to be louder, but you know, he doesn't want to realize that. He doesn't want to pay attention to the facts. He wants to skew and, and misrepresent the truth so that way he can make it sound like I'm doing something wrong. When in fact it's them. See, this is projection, gaslighting. These people are just lunatics. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, oh, and by the way, Doug Mary, if you happen to listen to this, um, why don't you read Ohio Revised Code 715.49, sections A and B? And then you can explain why the hell you didn't understand that and why you didn't know that when you sent this email to me. And why you're too stupid to comprehend reality. You know, or maybe it is that you can, and maybe it is that you would prefer to be a bully. Well, there's a remedy for that too. Let's see. A couple days later, 15 May 2020, from Doug Mary. Let's see. Get this thing to focus. 
Hopefully y'all can see that and read that. It says, from Doug Mary on 15 May 2020. I do hear it. Thanks for sending me something I can actually hear. The one I had earlier, the crickets were louder than the noise. It is not the tornado sirens as they run at noon on Wednesday and if there is actually a tornado warning issued. We have been in contact with a person who has equipment he can use to measure the sound as volume, frequency, and verify where it is coming from. Commercial Electronics is the company. We are working with them to get the availability of the equipment. We will then have to schedule with you when we can when we can get with you to do the testing. If it is outside the city, we may not have jurisdiction to enforce action, but with the evidence, we possibly can go through the county prosecutor and pursue the pro- to pursue the problem. See, this is contrary to what the law states. Um, what the city should have done when I began complaining about the noise, uh, and especially once I identified the sources because they were unwilling and incompetent, too incompetent to... Uh, identify them, uh, or maybe they were just protecting the businesses, the corporations, uh, from a pesky, you know, man or woman that uh, was bothered by noise, which is also contrary to the law. Uh, so, but you can see it right there. He contradicts himself, and if I remember correctly. There were some of the same recordings that I had sent multiple times. And so in one breath, he's telling me, all he hears is crickets. He can't hear anything else. And then in the next breath, he's telling me, oh, well, I can hear it. I do hear it. Thanks for sending me something I can actually hear. So, you know, finally, he's, he's kind of starting to come around and pay attention, but it doesn't last long. So here we go. 26 May, 2020. This is an email from me to Doug Mary. I don't know if you can read that. Uh, Before I start reading the body of the email, if you look there in the center, you'll see a kind of a black portion with green lines, uh, uh, vertical lines on it. Uh, That's what's known as a spectrum analyzer. It is an application, actually. This was an application from a device that uh, picks up the sound with the internal microphone and what you're seeing there is the evidence of the low frequency noise. Everything on the left side of that window, that darkened window where the green lines are, on the left side is the low frequency and on the right side is the high frequency. So you can see clearly, even though there's uh, no markings for amplitude to show the level of sound, it shows you that there is a presence, uh, a majority presence of low frequency sound uh, and this is taken from, uh, if I remember correctly, this was from uh, inside the structure on the property. Uh, so this is evidence of the noise in general, not just one particular source, but just the noise at that given moment in time that I took that reading uh, that shows you the level of noise that, uh, that I'm referring to. So here... Not only have I given an example and evidence to Doug Mary of the sound, he actually heard it for himself and he admitted it, but now I'm providing technical data, as in a Spectrum Analyzer screenshot, to show that there is definitely low frequency noise present. Uh, that's evidenced by that screenshot. So let me let me read this for you. Again, I can't tell if that's focused enough for you all to read it. Hopefully you can. Uh, It says, I took these readings from my home inside my safe room uh, with the door shut. There are no windows and it is all block and concrete. Uh, This is the hum noise that started in July 2018. This is the noise that AEP is ignoring and I had them test for a couple of months ago. Uh, The green lines are sound that the microphone is picking up. The new app will record the sound but will not save the recording. I am able to replay the recording and clearly hear the sound that I hear all day and all night at my property. I am working on using a second device to record the video of the test session and playback so I will be able to send the evidence. And it cuts off there. Um, 
But regardless of what the rest of the body of the email states, here is a further example of me sending evidence to Doug Mary, to uh, individuals, persons within the municipal corporation, uh, attempting to convey to them that this is a very real situation and that they need to pay attention. They need to stop playing games and making uh, snide remarks and uh, condescending remarks towards me as if I don't know what I'm talking about, when clearly they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Now here's a couple screenshots of Facebook conversations when I was on Facebook uh, back in 2020. I, uh, at some point shortly after this time frame, uh, I completely got off of all that. I just got tired of all the social media garbage. But at any rate, it was able to capture some of these conversations. So let's see. Zoom in here. Don't know if you'll be able to read that. Let's see if I get it to focus. Okay, now it's a little rough to see. But here's a conversation on uh, Facebook. It's between myself and uh, someone named Samantha Don Hennessy. Uh, apparently they claim to be uh, uh, somewhere in the area. And uh, it says here, Samantha Don Hennessy says, I can hear it late at night talking about the noise that I'm referring to, uh, but only sometimes. It is only when I am in my room and it sounds like it is coming outside. It drives me nuts and I seriously thought I was crazy because my boyfriend never hears it. Uh, so I had asked, what area of the city are you located? When you hear it, call 740-455-0700, option zero to speak to a dispatcher. It is a non-emergency phone number to the public safety building. Tell them what you hear and for how long. The more of us that report it to the city, uh, the faster they should actually do something to fix it. Thank you. So then Samantha Don Hennessy res uh, responded, replied, um, I am located by the fairgrounds, and I will do so the next time I hear it. So this further evidence is that there are other people in the community that are bothered by this noise, that the uh, municipality is refusing to address. Now, again, she didn't specify what noise she's hearing per se, but she's hearing noise. And so, uh, you know, this is just a further uh, indication that this is a widespread issue here, not just in the particular part of uh, the area where the where the, this property is, where I'm at, where I'm located, uh, or over by the fairgrounds, or in other areas of the city, this is a widespread problem. This is what Doug Mary and Donald Mason and many of the other cohorts are ignoring. Sergeant Patton, who refuses to do his job and is a complete failure. Um, excuse me. Here's a second screenshot. Another conversation. zoomed out here scroll down okay so here is another conversation on Facebook uh, I was having with let's see there's a couple people here uh, Ryan looks like Ryan and Amanda Dunwoody uh, Tommy Matthews let's see if there's anybody else in there Brian West Uh, Connie Allman, if you know any of these people. Uh, this was a conversation that I had with these people. This is back in the same time frame, uh, 2020. This is the last uh, screenshot from Facebook. So here we are. So uh, I am uh, referring to uh, the situation, describing the situation that I'm dealing with with some of these people. And, uh, and there, there, there at the top, you can see I say, uh, talking about where I'm located, and this is next to the TV station, um, they are definitely a suspect. And the reason why I said that is because uh, at one point I went up to the TV station, I was having them look into this issue uh, initially, and I noticed that uh, some of this noise that I'm hearing at, at this property uh, is even louder up on the hill where 
the TV station is where Wiz TV is. And so uh, after talking to some of their engineers and after some of their engineers acted very, very strange, uh, some of which came out to this property and heard the noise and others didn't, uh, but then very quickly went from, oh, we're going to lend you some equipment to help you figure out what it is and where it's coming from. And then all of a sudden, they just stopped answering my calls. They stopped returning my voicemails, uh, told me they couldn't help me. They told me that they couldn't lend me the equipment that they promised that they were going to lend me to help me figure this out because they wanted to keep a good relationship with the city, whatever the hell that means. So it was very odd, very odd, very suspicious. So um, that was why at this point I suspected that they were playing a role in at least the uh, power line issue. Uh, because based on my research, uh, it appears that nonlinear loads such as TV stations, which is the, the equipment that they use, it's considered a nonlinear load on the electrical system. What it does is it creates harmonics and dirty electricity, which feed back into the grid. And back in 2018, when the electric company removed all of the analog meters and switched to these digital uh, wireless uh, transmitting meters, they removed the filters. The older analog meters had filters within them to filter out these, this dirty electricity, the harmonics, to prevent them from flowing through the power grid and uh, into people's homes and into structures and, uh, and to affect devices, uh, you know, burning up electronics, hard drives, power supplies, you know, different stuff like that. It's harder. These, these har harmonics and dirty electricity makes it harder on electronics to operate. And so that's why prior there was filters on the systems to filter all this stuff out, to make it cleaner electricity. Well, the electric company removed all those filters. And so what they did was, is they basically allowed, uh, from my perspective and based on my research, what seems to be plausible, very plausible, is that the uh, harmonics are getting uh, forced back into the grid from the TV station. And this uh, these harmonics is potentially what I'm hearing. They may be either uh, actual sound that's being transmitted, or it could be uh, sound that's being transmitted through electric and magnetic fields from the exposure of the dirty electricity or their harmonics, uh, because there's certain uh, groupings of frequencies. When they group together, they create a very, uh, or they can create very harmful uh, scenarios. Um, and you can look into that. I don't want to get into all that here. But anyway, so let me get back to the, the picture here. So after I say that, uh, you know, next to the TV station, uh, you know, they're definitely a suspect. Um, Ryan and Amanda Dunwoody, whoever was, whomever was responding here, I'm not sure entirely who it was, uh, says, that's interesting. I'm sorry to hear you're having it, having the problems you described. And I respond again. I say, thank you. You know, there are more people suffering because of this than just me, though. This is something the entire community should be aware of. And you see here, just down below, uh, Tommy Matthews responds or uh, comments I should say says I've worked on the roof of the radio station next door I believe he's talking about next door to the TV station uh, and you can hear that tower hum and also draws lightning strikes actually scary as shit when bad weather comes in we couldn't get down fast enough a few times lol so then uh, Brian West comments if anything is to be done about this you're you are probably going to have to take the, the lead and find a way to bring them all together and petition the city. And then I replied, I said, I already started. We will not let this stand. Ryan and Amanda Dunwoody, whomever was responding, says, good for you. I hope everything gets resolved for you. I responded and replied, thank you. I hope it does also, but not just for myself. There are others. Connie Allman commented to me directly. Uh, I hear it. What is it? Very irritating. I heard it last night about 10 p.m. And I responded and replied, I am uncertain specifically what it is that is making the noise, but I believe it is coming from the wastewater treatment plant. Now, at this time... If uh, for any of you that uh, live in the area, especially off of Moxahela, uh, around the Zanesville area, you would know that that wastewater treatment plant for a while was putting out some obnoxious noise. And uh, at the beginning stages of uh, investigating this, these noise sources, 
Um, when I would get down to the bottom of the hill around uh, Marietta and Underwood, um, I would lose track of the noise coming from uh, the stave company and uh, casting solutions that I could hear at this property. And all I could hear was the noise coming from the wastewater treatment plant. And so I thought maybe uh, it was noise that's being produced from that plant that I'm able to hear that's carrying farther than what the noise that I could hear down at uh, Underwood and, and Marietta. So I contacted the city uh, about um, doing a noise assessment and uh, ruling that plant out as a potential source. Because uh, ultimately I wanted to find out, first of all, what the sources of the noise was or is. Uh, and then secondly, I wanted to determine after figuring out what the sources were, uh, what could be done about it. Because in certain, in certain aspects, even though it's obnoxious and uh, asinine, uh, these these wastewater treatment plants can make noise. You know, it's it's part of the the city infrastructure. You know, they they claim that in the code, so they give themselves that that immunity, so they can make as much noise as they want doing doing their production. Even though there's other wastewater treatment plants across the country that are extremely quiet that I've never had issues with. It's it's places like this, like Zanesville, Ohio, where the public servants are so incompetent that they can't do simple tasks, and so uh, the infrastructure is failing. Um, the, uh, people that are in positions within the municipal corporation or within these departments or divisions of it, uh, are lazy, lackadaisical, make excuses for their incompetence like Doug Mary and others. But, uh, you saw that here on the screen. So here we've got another screenshot. Get this zoomed in here so you can see it looks like you should be able to read that here's a conversation between uh, myself and uh, someone named Cheryl Duvall Smith uh, now here Cheryl Duvall Smith says we live on the end by TJ's and at night hear a low hum but doesn't sound like what you're describing what we hear sounds like a tornado siren way off in the distance Cheryl Duvall Smith or excuse me, I, re I replied to Sheridan Vol Smith uh, and asked, can you please record it so I can have a reference? Uh, and then Sheridan Vol Smith replied to me, said, uh, I will try tonight. To my knowledge, I don't think she ever uh, got me a recording of it for a reference. But I did find out that more than likely they were referring to casting solutions uh, because their noise, that the noise coming from their plant particularly uh, I think it might be a steam valve. Um, it reminds me of a, a tea kettle. When a tea kettle is, is boiling and going off, that, uh, that noise that a tea kettle makes, um, it's, it's very similar, a little bit different pitch and tone. Uh, it's very close from what I've uh, been able to ascertain. It's very close in pitch and tone to the uh, tornado sirens, as Cheryl Duvall Smith was uh, uh, validating here, which is what I've conveyed to Doug Mary and uh, others. So uh, here I have replied to Sheridan Vol Smith and said, uh, uh, in the comments above, Sandra Willoughby and I were discussing how to get a good recording. It is the best way that I have found without spending a lot of money on gadgets. Uh, and then of course I responded, thank you. Uh, what I was referring to there is at one point in time, I was taking recordings using a four inch PVC pipe, uh, roughly six feet in length, uh, may have been longer, the longer, the better. Uh, and what I did was, is I put a microphone in the, in one end of the, the PVC pipe and, uh, put a, uh, towel in the end of it to block so that way uh, the noise would uh, be forced into the microphone. And so then I used uh, this PVC pipe as a directional microphone, or what they call a shotgun mic, and I aimed it in the direction of these specific businesses from, from this property, uh, particularly up on the back 
elevated deck. And I was able to aim in the direction of casting solutions. And I was able to aim directly in the uh, direction of the stave company. And that's what helped me determine the sources of the noise. And I was able to pick up this uh, noise that uh, Cheryl Duvall Smith was referring to that I've also referred to that sounds very close to the tornado siren that rings out at all hours of the night uh, and, and daytime. Uh, but it's most disturbing at night when it does. And uh, I have some recordings of that. And again, that's, that's primarily from casting solutions uh, from what I found. So there's that there. Now here we have a screenshot of uh, Spectrum Analyzer. And you can see here, again, on the left side of the screen is the low frequency. On the right side of the screen is the higher frequency. You can see the uh, particular frequency numbers, the particular bands at the bottom of the screen. It goes 0, 513, 1027, 1540, and on, so on and so forth. Those are the particular specific frequencies or bandwidths. If you look at the boxes that, uh, that are in between the lines, vertical lines where the numbers are, that's the uh, particular spectrums between those individual frequencies. So 513 is a frequency. It's 513 hertz or 513 cycles per second. 1027 is uh, 1027 uh, hertz or uh, 1027 cycles per second. Now, so those are the frequencies across the bottom. And you can see as the numbers get lower down to zero, the graph gets higher. That's showing you the amplitude. That's showing you the level of noise. So here we have, even though the amplitude, so you see on the left, there's the numbers there. At the top, it says zero, then negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, uh, or hyphen. Um, these are just markers to show so you can assess the, the level of amplitude based on the baseline. So if you look at the green line and the red line and how they slope down to the right, and if you go all the way to the far right of the, of the screen, and you see where the green and red lines are relatively, respectively, the right and about, uh, and, and keep in mind, the red line is the peak. The green line is the, uh, the current reading. Um, so just keep that in mind. So the, the baseline of the green line, that's the current noise level. You can see on the right side of the screen, it's roughly at about 120 uh, decibels. Or in this case, I guess a ne negative 120 decibels uh, on the graph, just so you can see that. So if that's the baseline at 120, you can see where the peak is. The peak reaches all the way up to just shy of uh, 50, according to the uh, little window up there at the top right, you can see the red square where it says peak 75.37 hertz, and it's at a, a uh, decibel reading of 49.7. So in this instance, what you do is you subtract the uh, 49.7 from the 120. So, and that gives us a difference. So that would give us a difference of 70. So just shy of 70 decibels off of the baseline, which is 120. So that would be considered zero. 120 technically would be zero. And then the peak, the peak and the current reading, which you can see the current reading is just, just about a decibel under the peak at that given moment. Uh, but it's constantly fluctuating up and down. It's not steady. It's not. It doesn't stay at that one. Uh, at that one spot, it the amplitude fluctuates up and down um, very quickly. And so here we have a peak of seventy decibels of low frequency noise, and that's particularly right around the range of uh, somewhere between I would say twenty to hundred hertz in the extreme low frequency range, which is what I've been referring to and what I've been talking about uh, when it comes to the power lines, because the power lines operate on a 60 hertz frequency. And so you can see 
very clearly in this low frequency, extreme low frequency range in that roughly 60 hertz range, somewhere between 20 hertz and 100 hertz. Because uh, if you can see in that box between 0 and 513, in the middle of that box would be roughly uh, 255 decibels, excuse me, 255 hertz. So you can see where the peak comes up, that red point, and even the green point where they come up, they're a little bit left of the center of that box. So they're almost at about the, the one-fourth marker, if you will, give or take, of that box. So essentially one-fourth of the, the 513 hertz is, a, is basically where that's at. And I mean, it shows you in the peak, the hertz, it's, it's 75 hertz. Um, so right there, right around 60 hertz is what is uh, what this uh, spectrum analyzer is is picking up. So there's some evidence there of the low frequency noise. So it's not just a myth. It's not um, a uh, something you know in, in the imagination. It's it's very real. 